both king and queen of the castle. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> you have the final say. You said you grew up here. Yes. This was your, because the, the winery, the castle, and your family are quite linked. Yes, they all belonged together since 1654, mm -hmm. when my ancestors bought Schloss Salonek. Mm. And they've been, I mean, making wine since, but even before yes. then. Yes, yes. Well, Salonek started producing wine uh, around 1068. Uh, but then it was still in the hands of the monks from the Benedictiner monastery from uh, 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 across the valley, Pfeffers. And only in 1330 it uh, was sold by the church or the monastery to the family von Salis. And that's where Salonig got its name. One of the most notable facts, of course, about the Salonig and the win winery is it is the oldest continuous winery in Europe. Yes, that's, that's what we think we are. Uh, there have never been profound studies in, in the history, but since winemaking was mentioned for the town of Meinfeld in 1068, uh, and at that time, making wine was uh, reserved for, for the monasteries and so forth, and, and Salonek being a dépendance of the monastery of Pfeffers. Uh, we are convinced that the vineyard in front of the house is that very uh, meant, that vineyard that was mentioned in, in, in the archive of, of uh, Mayenfeld. So that makes us convinced that this claim is true. What is so special about this region in Grau, of Graubünden? I think it's the climatic situation we've got. Uh, it seems to be a little oasis that is a little bit warmer and uh, less prone to, to hail and, and rail and, and, and all the other disasters that can strike an agricultural uh, region. Are you affected by climate change like so many other agricultural endeavors? And the wineries, um, I mean. Uh, certainly we, we, we will be. I mean, we see now with this summer that it is much drier and if it rains, it rains harder. Or with the frost we had late in spring last year, um, it will all be correlated in, in, in one way or another. The bigger change there is um, the change in, in uh, the way the consumer sees things. Mm -hmm. uh, during the time of my grandfather and my father, it was, it, it was basically enough to just produce one good wine. Mm -hmm. And um, what I had then to, 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 to do was to expand the, the, the different wines, um, to have different wines on, on, on offer because people were coming here and looked at our uh, traditional uh, Blauburgunder and said, well, is that all you've got? People nowadays want to have a choice. And, and that made it necessary, of course, to, to adapt on what we produce to satisfy consumers mm -hmm. and, and what they are looking for. And this might... Uh, is, is one of the reasons why I then expanded into uh, natural vinegars and uh, now oils as well. So the latest product that we added is the grapeseed oil. Is this what led to the um, expansion of this, of, of the yes, winery itself? Yes, definitely. Because we were well equipped to produce that traditional uh, Blauburgunder. In this room, actually, right? In, in, in this room, and underneath was, was, was the cellar, and that, that was it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but now if, if, if we sort of, uh, we are producing uh, uh, seven different types mm -hmm. of, of wine now, and for that, you, we needed more space. And that's why I'm very grateful. I was able to uh, build the additional uh, modern, uh, it's quite different, eh? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, well, it's, that, that's, it's like a walk in time <laughs> when you cross those doors. Yes, yeah. you can sort of step from 1658 right into the 2011. What I think is, is my duty or is the duty of, of every member of the family who runs the business here is to make sure that we are well equipped for the future but don't forget our roots. 
it's, it's sort of helpful too, because if you have got difficult times, like during the financial crisis or the, 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 the euro sort of crumbling. Yeah, the, uh, and uh, then you sort of can read up uh, in the family history that there were a lot harder times before and one survived. So it's sort of the long history gives, give, gives you a frame within you, you can move and, 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 and feel free. And being flexible, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, sure. But that, that anyone who works with nature has to be flexible. Normally they hold What is the business model? <laughs> <laughs> well, the business model up till now, the, the winery was, was just running along. And my father and my friend, grandfather, they earned the money at, outside in the industry because mm, my grandfather was an engineer, uh, for example. And uh, wine was basically his hobby. Uh, now, with the the upkeep of of, of the, the the house and the estate, I've decided for myself. I can't pass it on to my children if the estate cannot at least support itself. So that's the aim on expanding the business. I was able, or I, I was lucky enough to be able to, to buy some more vineyards. Uh, with expanding into the, the, the vinegars and, and oils and so forth, um, just to give Salonek a broader base on which Salonek by itself can, can survive. And your kids, are, there's one that's already lined up to take over. Um, yes, they're very interested. And okay. I'm, I think I'm fortunate there. <laughs> <laughs> there won't be any issues in finding a successor, which is sometimes yeah, yeah, not easy. Yeah. So what is the biggest challenge that you're facing at the moment in terms of the wine business? I mean, is it standing out? I just feel like there's so many wines around the world. How do you stand well, out? I think, I, well, we're standing out probably by the, by, by the history of, of, of the place. Once you've, you've, you've seen Zalanek, you know that you're uh, getting something from a different world uh, where there is, where you can drink and experience uh, tradition. Then let's say in comparison to other wineries, even though with 11 and a half hectares or putting it in bottles, 60,000 bottles, we're medium sized to big for Switzerland, but in comparison to the rest of the world, we're just a little drop in the, in the big wine ocean. And uh, is this okay? Which, which is perfect because that means we have a very personal approach to our customers. We, we know them all. There is, um, and, and we, our customers and, 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 and we with that close contact, uh, they're convinced that they know what they're getting, which uh, taking any foreign wine, you sort of have to believe what the people tell you. And here you can come and check up if, uh, if it's actually the way we claim it is. So I think being small and excellent is, is the secret to the challenge. And not exporting. Right. Well, because we you don't too, export. Sorry. No, we're, we're, we're too small. So that, no. Uh, already we, we sort of, our, uh, the majority of the customers is in Graubünden and in the canton of Zurich. Um, it would be interesting to expand, but we can't expand more than what the vineyards sort of give us to, to, to sell. Which you said so, it's like 60,000 bottles yeah, on yeah. a good year? Mm -hmm. So you have your limits is, somehow. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I think that's that's possibly a bit what you learn with with with, with Salonik. There is so much history, and you can see how things have developed. That you get yourself into the frame of mind of trying to figure out. Um, I've got this now, so on how can I get even more out of it? So. Um, 
except for the stems, now I can use everything nature provides as far as grapes go. And um, alcohol is, for so many people, it's fine, but uh, so and so many, they don't really want to have anything to do with alcohol. So there is, is, is the vinegar or, or the, the grape seed oil is then a great um, discovery. And you've got always the surprise on your side, that's, good. that's right. <laughs> And what do you do with the castle itself? I live in it. Okay. There is nothing else to do with it. But you really are the queen of the castle. <laughs> you even live in your castle. Oh, okay. Yes, so this sure. is really your home. Yes, yes. Also, okay. And you that's why home. I keep it quite. <laughs> yes. Actually, I've only got 10 meters to go till I'm at my desk. So <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> from the bedroom to the desk. No. So you keep it for your personal living yes, space? Yes, yes. Okay. So it's not like a museum or so? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. All right. I was just. I was curious. Do you find that there are a lot of other women in your in this in the field of winemaking, or is it mostly male dominated? Um, it was when I was a child. Mm. Uh, it's changing. But but now we're we're we're, we're getting there. It is a, it's a bit like with chefs in hotel cuisines. Mm. At home, every woman has to be able to cook. In the hotel, as soon as it's business, it's only the men who can do it. And in the wine business, it was a bit the same. The women were kept to tend to the vines and so forth. But as soon as the harvest was in, it was the men who took over. And now it's, uh, it's better. Let's put it that way. 